All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash, Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. And I, and I want to go into a lesson through the Spirit. As exhortation, if you will, through the spirit on victory mindset. All right, through the spirit and poverty, how about Shemal Shai? I want to go into a lesson on this, and I will start off with First John, uh, chapter three, and verse eighteen, and it reads, "My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before Him." For if our heart condemn us, Yahweh Shemal Shah is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward Yahweh Shemal Shah. All right, and the victory mindset is important. It's extremely important on this journey uh, that we go through through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemal Shah. All right, because we're going to go through certain trials and tribulations, we're going to go through certain mental obstacles. All right. Things that try and test your mental. All right. And you have to be able to maneuver through all of these different situations through the spirit with confidence toward your how by Shemel Shai. You know, and what does that mean on a personal level? It means that whatever you're going through through the spirit, you have to have the confidence that ultimately it's in it's in the Lord's hands. All right. And that it's working in your favor. Lord willing. Does that mean it's going to be comfortable every time? Not at all. All right, but what does it mean? It, it ultimately means that the Lord is doing this for your property. All right, as a matter of fact, let's go to Hebrews 12. All right, because I kind of covered that briefly. Um, Hebrews 12 and 6. All right, and it reads, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh by Shemal Shai dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily... For a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, I want to go through the entire precept. Because it touches some beautiful points, all right? We understand through the spirit that we are being chastised, all right? And at the present moment, whatever personal situation you're going through, through the spirit, it's not supposed to feel comfortable, all right? It's not supposed to feel uh, joyous, as the scriptures describe it, you know? And oftentimes, this comes from this comparing mindset where you, you know, you go into a situation and you, you feel like you're the only one that is approaching certain situations and it's and it's uncomfortable or it's beyond your strength. When in reality, every brother's being chastened, all right, to a level, Lord willing, all right, to push them past your comfort zone. So it's not supposed to feel good. And it's okay if it doesn't feel good sometimes. But the victory mindset doesn't mean that you wake up every day like you've had six cups of coffee. It means that through those rough patches and those good patches, you understand that victory is at the end of the tunnel. That is ultimately what the victory mindset is. And that's what the scriptures give us. That's why the scriptures give us the warning of what we are to face and to fear not, to not be dismayed. The Lord wouldn't have to tell us this if we weren't going to go through certain things that would challenge our understanding, that would strengthen our faith. And that means it's going to hurt sometimes. You don't go into a workout if you expect to improve 
without feeling uncomfortable at moments of your workout, all throughout your workout. You know, when you, for those who lift weights or you do calisthenics, push-ups and pull-ups, you know, them last few sets are usually hard. If you're pushing yourself, you know, those last couple reps are, are hard, man. And, now, and, and in those moments, you have to decide for yourself if you want to accomplish the goal, all right, or give in to the pain. Now, the Lord told us he had never put us on, put on us more than we can bear. So the beautiful thing about the scriptures is the Lord has already told us that the victory is set. All right. Our job is to hold fast, to endure until the end. All right. Real quick. This is Revelation chapter three and verse 10. And it reads, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And this means that the crown has already been given all right, for those who understand this truth, and you have to hold on to it, meaning you have to endure until the end. And the beautiful thing about this precept is that it's giving you the understanding that the victory is already set. You just have to endure for it. And again, everything is easier said than done, but through the spirit, it's, it's possible. And this is why Yahweh Shai said this in John 16. All right. When, whenever we go through tribulations in this world, we have to be reminded of Yahweh Bashim Shai and the records that he left for us, particularly dealing with Yahweh Shai. All right. Let me get this. This is John 16. And I will jump down to verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world. Ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Yahweh Shai has set forth that path by walking it and being an intercessor between us and the Father, Lord willing, so that we can look at his story and his victory and follow in the same mindset. Our, tr our trials and tribulations may not be as big as Yahweh Shai's. But his record, his victory proves that if we hold fast and endure through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, that it's possible to achieve the victory. That's the desire. And it doesn't mean it's going to feel good all the time. But what it ultimately means is that victory is set before us. And we have a beautiful history of those who've been over, who've been able to overcome their adversities. Through the faith in Yahweh by Shemel Shai. All right. Real quick. This is. Let's get. Wisdom of Solomon chapter four. And I will start at. One. It says better it is to have no children and to have virtue for the memorial thereof is immortal. Because it is known with Yahweh by Shemel Shai and with men. When it is present, men take example at it. And when it is gone, they desire it. It weareth a crown and triumpheth forever, having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're striving for those undefiled rewards. And it means it's going to come with it certain trials and tribulations. But ultimately, through the spirit, if we remain faithful through all of those situations, the Lord will never put on you more than you can bear. All right. And with those things, he'll make a way for you to escape it. And the victory mindset is to keep that in mind on your personal journey. Everything that you're going through on a personal level is to build you up for the day that you're going to need it the most through the spirit of Pavi Al Shemel Shai. And it's a build up ultimately. All right. Real quick. This is first Corinthians nine and twenty five. And it reads, you know what? I'll start at 24. Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run 
that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. All right, meaning you are fighting for a purpose. You're not just fighting for the sake of fighting. You're fighting for a purpose. All right. And just like we have confidence that the Lord is going to judge through the spirit, we have to have confidence that if we endure until the end and we remain faithful, we might be saved. All right. And this is why Paul said something like this. All right. When you go into the NLT, it says, so I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. And what is our purpose? Ultimately, is to get the victory through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, to be delivered, to see that transition. And that's going to come with good days and bad days. And having a victory uh, mindset is not about, again, waking up every day like you've drunk six cups of coffee. It means that through your ups and your downs, you ultimately know that Yahweh by Shemel Shai has your best interest at heart. That even if you're fighting tired through the spirit, the Lord is there with you for you to uh, in your best interest. He's in your corner. Otherwise, you're just shadow boxing. You're running uncertainly. All right, real quick. ESV, the ESV uh, version says, so I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. All right. So what what that really means is that you're striving for something. It's for a purpose. And ultimately, the purpose is that victory at the end. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. And the victory mindset is believing and being confident. All right. That the Lord is counting you a part of that number as it stands this day. And that's why you have to endure. You know, when you read Revelation, the third chapter, and it talks about that no man take thy crown. Do you believe that you already have a crown that you're holding on to? Because every day through the spirit, we have to wake up with the understanding, at least, that we're holding on to a crown. Lord willing, we, we endure to the end, but that is the goal at the end of this. All right, Philippians 1 and 5 reads, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Otherwise, why are you fighting? All right, if you don't believe victory is at the end of the tunnel, for you personally. All right, and that's what the, the victory mindset involves, being comforted and rooted and confidence in Yahweh by Shemel Shai for your personal situation if you're doing what is required of you through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Yes, you're going to fall some days. Yes, some days are going to be tougher than others. And this is why having a victory mindset is so important because it's a reminder of what you're ultimately fighting for. All right, real quick, this uh, Philippians 1 and 5. In the... Uh, You know what? Let me go to six because I want to get uh, Philippians one and six in the uh, NLT. And it reads, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finished on the day when Hamashiach Yahweh Shai returns. And it shows you, it says to, to continue the work within you. All right. So the moment you received this truth, it was the beginning of a race. And some men have not completed the race. But it, this story isn't about them. Concerning you as it stands this day, you are still in the race. Have you fallen on this race? Of course, we've all fallen. But as the scripture said, just man falleth seven times and getteth back up again. Yes, these things have happened. Yes, some days you wake up and you're in a lower state. Maybe it's a situation that happened. You know, maybe it's a news article you've seen that upset you. 
Whatever the case, maybe one day you just woke up and it just wasn't your day. Yet, you have to understand that you're still in a race. If the Lord has continued to, to bestow upon you this truth, this wisdom, this knowledge and understanding, then you're still in the race. And you have to have confidence that the Lord is going to give you the ability to finish the race. Because again, in this truth, you're going to go through peaks and valleys. You're going to go through highs and lows. And you have to be able to maintain consistency as far as your mindset is concerned through all of those things that you go through. This is why the scriptures say over and over, fear not, be not dismayed. Why? Because there were going to be things in your path that uh, test your faith. There are going to be things in your path, and this is, this is normal. But we're not running uncertainly. We understand that all of the trials and tribulations we're going through are ultimately for our profiting, like it says in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. All right, that the Lord. All right, let's get this. Let's get Romans chapter eight. And I will jump down to verse 28. And it reads, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love you, how by Shemal Shai, to them who are called according to his purpose. All right, so some of those low days are meant for you to appreciate the high days, the days where you're, you're on a, a, a spiritual high, you know, to put it uh, for lack of a better term. Sometimes those low days are, are meant for you to appreciate certain things. Sometimes we lose things that improve our journey, our walk. And that happens a lot of times. Initially, it hurts. But in the long term, once that wound is healed, so to speak, you can look back on it and see that ultimately it was for the good of you. Loving you, how about Shemi Shai. That's why we have to take the, the high days and the low days all right, with the same mindset that ultimately through the spirit, all right, the Lord is is with us to redeem us. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. That you're not waiting for nothing. You have to keep that in mind. Otherwise, what are you fighting for? All right, and Lord willing, this was edifying. I just want to go into that again because, you know, we go through every brother's going through something, you know. And that's meant to refine you and to better you. But ultimately, it's for the victory. And we have to approach all of these situations with that same mindset because every day is not going to be the same. Every day you're not going to wake up um, on the same spiritual uh, level as far as your mood is concerned. There are going to be days where you, you know, you you super vexed. And there's going to be days where you, you know, you feel like you can jump out of your body. And those who get it, get it. And those who don't, maybe you haven't gotten there yet. Lord willing, you will. But again, ultimately, with those days, highs or lows, we have to maintain that victory mindset. That ultimately, this is for a reward at the end of this. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. And we have to maintain that understanding. All right. The Lord will never put anything on us that we can't bear. All right. But at the same time, we understand that every day we're not going to wake up like we drunk six cups of coffee. But ultimately, even in those days, you push through. Why? Because you understand that there's a victory at the end of this. It's already written. You just have to endure and get back up again. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word, in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.